when I was a kid, I used to look at people that had money like. I didn't look at them like I should have what they had, but I used to look at them like they were greedy. I would look at people that had money, and I would always feel like they were somehow better than me, and I was worthless, and I was less, and I would always feel like the rich bastards that had money were rich bastards, and you know, I didn't feel like I deserved what they had, but for some reason, for whatever reason, I felt like because they were rich, that they didn't deserve it. I don't know why I would feel like that, because I don't have the type of personality to look at what somebody else has and say, I'm going to get that and I'm going to take it. Like, I don't, I don't, I can see what other people are doing and I feel the need to want to work toward that, but I don't feel like I should just instantly have that. So I don't know why I ever felt that way. Um, here recently, I was in the local post office and I was there shipping packages or, uh, you know, just, just like we do every day. And there was this old man and this old woman, I don't know how old they were, but everybody in the post office kept, you know, there's always a big long line in there and everybody kept glancing at these two people. These two people were at the little podium in the middle and they were filling out some stuff that they were going to mail, but everybody kept peeking over there at them and peeking at them. And, you know, I just walked in, so I didn't know what was going on. Well, they started like making smart remarks to people and somebody would walk up and they would want an envelope and and want some little special thing like what's a good example i can't think of a good example right now but so they would walk up and they would want an envelope and this old old man in the middle would smart off he's like yeah, they're gonna charge you an arm and a leg for that and every time somebody walked up to the front counter this old guy and this old gal was making smart remarks to the customers that were coming in to pay for stuff so they had obviously been upcharged on something and they were really 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 pissy and upset about it to the point where they were making smart remarks to other people that were in the post office so i'm looking at these people and i'm looking at the car that i drove there to ship the packages and as i hear these people in the way that they're acting realizing that we're in the post office and they're not talking about $100. They're not talking about $10. They're not talking about $5. These people aren't talking about a dollar. They're talking about 38 cents. And they're sitting here causing a scene and just riling people up. And they're just, I wouldn't say riling people up. I mean, they were pretty civil. These are all older, grown up, older people. But they were still just being disgustingly nasty over, over change. It caused me to really look back at where I came from because there was a part of my childhood whenever I felt like that. Whenever I felt like you went into a company and they're going to, you know, every time you ask for something, they're going to upsell and they're going to gouge you. And yeah, a lot of them do. do. And that, that, that shit really gets old, but it's not that big of a deal. Um, it's really difficult for me to get to where I'm trying to go with this. Sometimes I feel like getting these things out of me and I just, uh, I, you know, the, I got to talk about it. So these people were putting on a show over pennies and here I am. I'm in my mid thirties. I drove a 2017 model vehicle to the post office and I'm not realizing over time how things have changed relatively just over the last year. Now, whenever I start first started posting YouTube videos, I was still at a point in my life where I was really, really, really struggling for money. Like, yeah, I had afforded a microscope and I had afforded things, but it wasn't easy. And I really, really, really had to watch, really had to watch what I spent. There was a point in time where we were sitting at the shop and my wife and I were hungry and we didn't even have enough money to go buy a, a fucking soda. And we're trying to get customers to pay for jobs and, and trying to keep things going. And there was a point in time whenever I was just really, 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 really down in the dumps. And I think at that point in time in my life, I was still sort of looking at people that had money like the people that had money. You know, that's the way I felt. I'm looking at these people like they have money and, and I don't. And one day I'm going to have money. And there's a difference in a type of person that has a lot of money that worked for it and rightfully earned it. Now, by worked for it, I'm not talking about like some measurement of work, like how hard or how long they had to work for it. Whether or not they worked for it and earned it honestly, 
that's that that's that's what the big deal is. If it's somebody that didn't earn their money honestly and they earn their money by stomping on people and really grinding people into the ground and they earn their money by doing harm to others and they earn their money by making other people suffer and they're sitting there rich because other people suffered, that's the assholes. That's the rich assholes that I used to look at like rich assholes. But now that I'm a little older and I'm growing up a little more and I'm starting to have a really good thing of my own going, it feels good to be able to pay for things and to know that I'm doing it honestly. So it's given me this outlook on people that I don't care how little work they did. If they walked out, you know, if they, if they just walked into the right building at the right time, shook hands with the right person and signed the right deal, and now they are filthy rich beyond belief, it doesn't matter how much work they did to get that to get to that point. What matters is that they got to that point honestly, and they did it without screwing other people. So there are these rich bastards that you know they earn their living by screwing other people in the ass. But there's rich bastards too that earned a complete honest living, and they are by God entitled to it. It doesn't matter how hard that they worked for it. I guess where I'm going with this is that. This experience with becoming a YouTube content creator is turning me into something that I never knew was possible. I grew up my whole entire life always getting and spending the amount of money that I brought in. Whatever money that I brought in was the amount of money that I would pay out on bills, and it still wasn't enough to keep the wolves off my back. They would always want more money. And we're finally reaching a point in our lives where we've got cars that don't break down. We're able to pay for things. We have displays. I have the tools that I need. If I really, really, really wanted to order me another hot air station right now and get me something with more than one channel, I could, but this is working perfectly fine. So for the first point in my life, we have enough cash flow coming through to where I'm able to put money back every day. And um, that's all because of this YouTube channel. And it's really given me a whole new outlook on life and a whole new outlook on, on how to save money. And I never had it before. I was always that one looking at the people that had money. Like they had something that I didn't and I didn't realize just how little effort that it could take to reach out and, and grab a hold of something like that. It's, you just got to do it. You really, you really, really just got to do it. I'm going to talk about just briefly. I'm going to touch on how to save money whenever you're, uh, like me, I'm completely financially dumb. Just look at my remarks that I made on Bitcoin in one of my last videos, and then look at the price of Bitcoin today. So I'm probably the last person you should ever be following financial advice from, but I can give you advice from somebody that is completely, totally stupid about money. I can say that no matter how much money that you make, no matter how much you're bringing in every day, you should take one small percentage of that every day and put it aside and forget about it. You should do this. It doesn't matter how small it is, but because it's all relative, how much money you make is relative to your lifestyle. But if you take some small percentage of that and pay yourself into an account, like it's a bill, and just let that start accumulating, you'll find out over time before you know it, that's accumulated enough to where you've forgotten about it. It's off to the side because you never have enough money. You've got this rolling cash flow. It's there and gone. It's just, if you treat it, if you only look at this one pot of money, it's there and gone. It's always there and gone. It's there and gone. It's there and gone. When you're in business, you've got this rolling flow of money. It's, it's here and gone, here and gone. Uh, that's the way most people are living. Now, some people are making gobs and gobs and gobs of money and, and they don't have just this one pot of money. As time has went on, I have learned how to save money in a way that's completely changed my life. No matter what happens, no matter what happens throughout the day, I take and I make one payment to myself at the end of the day. I make a payment to myself. Now that is, you know, as long as you have enough money, make that payment to yourself. And if you don't have enough money to make that payment to yourself, make the payment anyways. Make it less because pay something because here's the deal. If that was your electric company on your ass and they're going to shut your electric off, You'll come up with some way to find that money and you're going to pay the electric company. If it is your homeowner and they are knocking on the door for their rent check, you're going to come up with some way to pay the rent or they're going to kick you out on your ass. So if you treat that payment into savings just the same way that you would treat a payment to a bill collector or somebody that can come and take something from you, 
you owe it to yourself. You break your you break your neck to come up with this money to give it to some of these people that don't deserve it, like the utility company that I pay. That's not an honest living. They're, they're not making an honest living. But if every day or every week or however often, whatever cycle that you work out, if you just take some percentage of that on a routine basis and create a bill, treat it like you would your house payment, that's your payment toward a goal. And you continue to make that payment and by before you know it, you've got the money sitting there to buy whatever it is that you're after. Um, that probably sounds really dumb, but I'm telling you, I am somebody that has zero financial background and I have learned how to build all this up. And um, I started with a hairdryer 